Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about omega-3. That was, Again, that was omega-9. Let's talk a little bit about omega-3. So alpha-linolenic acid, which is mostly derived from plant-based foods, um, is not technically um, the end product of EPA and DHA. Right, these big, um, fancy, long, complex words, docosa hexaenoic acid and icosa pentaenoic acid. That's why we abbreviate them EPA and DHA because they're a mouthful. But this is plant-based, and this in and of itself, to, to become largely beneficial, has to be converted, okay? And that conversion predominantly occurs here. So we get, we get alpha-linolenic acid, which converts into EPA, and it's done through this enzyme, right? So this conversion occurs through an enzyme that requires these nutrients, B3, vitamin B6, zinc, and magnesium. So um, a lot of people ask, well, okay, I, I actually have already seen this question in the feed. I'm, a, I'm allergic to fish. Um, there are plant-based sources of alpha-linolenic acid, um, but if you don't have enough B3, B6, zinc, or magnesium in your diet, then you can block the conversion of ALA to EPA. And remember, EPA has very important functions. And so it's important, again, to understand there's a biochemistry that occurs. There's a conversion that occurs. It's not just about you know, eating plant-based sources of ALA and wishing for the best. Sometimes in, in people that are very sick who have malnutrition, and we see this a lot with people with gluten sensitivity, magnesium, zinc, and B vitamin deficiencies, um, can lead to a reduction in the ability to actually generate or make EPA from alpha-linolenic acid, again, which is the plant-based source of omega-3. The other thing that's important to know is that this enzyme is blocked by alcohol. So if you're a heavy drinker, uh, even that one glass of wine a night, right? And I see this a lot. I've seen get this a lot, actually, in vegetarians. It's not that people can't be vegetarian and it be a safe diet, but if you're a vegetarian and you're drinking alcohol on a daily basis, you're going to have a harder time getting adequate EPA, and this is going to potentially lead to increased risk for heart disease. And I, most vegeta vegetarians I talk to, uh, one of the biggest reasons we hear people go vegetarian is, to, is their doctor told them they wanted them to reduce their risk of heart disease. But again, they also tell them to drink that glass of red wine every night, and so you're now inhibiting the enzyme that helps you get here, and that, that is going to increase your risk for heart disease. We also know that trans fat, uh, trans fats, it will block this enzyme from working. So that's your, your, you know, your hydrogenated fats. Um, predominantly, you know, we're not using those or seeing those being used as much today as we were 10 years ago, but these are the oils, the hydrogenated vegetable oils, the shortening, the Crisco, things of that nature that are commonly used in baking. Um, so these types of fats, again, they inhibit this enzyme from doing its job to convert into EPA. We know that protein deficiency can, can restrict this conversion, and we know that steroids, so if you're taking like glucocorticoids, um, that would be like cortisol, right? So if you're, if you're on a glucocorticoid a steroid, like an asthma inhaler, or if you're taking steroids for chronic pain, or taking steroids for an autoimmune um, arthritis condition, like these these steroids will block, again, the conversion of ALA into EPA. And that's, that's an important uh, thing to recognize because you need this, right? This is essential, especially if you're not eating animal products because the only other major source of EPA really comes from uh, animal products, right? It comes predominantly from cold water fish. And we know that EPA is super critical. Why? Because it regulates inflammation. Um, we know DHA is super important because it, it, it's, it's, we call it oftentimes, we refer to it as brain fat, right? It's very important for the brain development, especially of growing babies. It's also important for the brain health in adults. And uh, there are linkages to DHA deficits and, um, and Alzheimer's and onset of dementia. But this also, this fat here also regulates inflammation. So they both help in this process. It's just this one a little bit more focused in the brain, this one a little bit more focused systemically. So omega-3, uh, EPA, DHA, very, very important. Now here's uh, a little bit about omega-6. Again, I, I mentioned earlier, a lot of people refer to omega-6 as bad, but I, I don't want you to think of them as bad. I want you to think of the source 
of where you're getting them from and how in the quantity of how much you're getting in compared to the quantity of omega-3 because it's about ratios but these are very important fats too now what generally you get linoleic acid from grains which I don't recommend especially in those that are gluten sensitive grains and nuts uh, are some of the predominant sources of linoleic acid grains nuts and seeds and and most of where Americans get this and, and even other folks in industrialized countries are from processed seed oils so like if, if you're eating out at a restaurant where they're using you know processed seed oils like corn oil um, soy oil canola oil these are some of your major ones this is what one of the reasons why omega-6 is so high in the standard uh, in the standard industrialized diet it's it's way over represented it's also blocked it's, so linoleic acid comes in through those things and then it has to be converted into this very helpful type of omega-6 called gamma linoleic acid and gamma helps also just like the omega-3s helps to regulate inflammation and this is actually very very helpful uh, women ladies is very very helpful if you have premenstrual symptoms you know ag aggressive cramping and pain around your cycle this type of fat can be very very effective and very very helpful at modulating that because of its effect um, because of its effect in, in the production of, of prostaglandins and so regulating inflammation so again same thing here we have this enzyme that's used to convert linoleic acid into gamma linoleic acid and it requires the same level and the same nutrients that we saw with omega-3 it's also blocked by trans fat it's blocked by alcohol um, and so you know in order to get this to convert properly and so what happens for a lot of people is they're malnourished they have diets that are high in trans fat they have diets that are too high in linoleic acid and so what ends up happening is this whole enzymatic system gets bogged down they never make it here to any level of efficiency and so they don't have the ability to regulate inflammation as well and so then they're chronically inflamed remember when I use the word regulate inflammation a lot of people want to use the word anti-inflammatory what's the difference between regulating inflammation and being anti-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory is something that generally will tend to block inflammation and I think it's important to differentiate what I mean uh, so there's anti and then there's regulatory so something that regulates so understand that inflammation is a normal bodily process and just like omega-3 and omega-6 neither one are bad it's about how much you eat and it's about ratios inflammation is not bad either although it oftentimes gets a bad rap because we always hear we hear especially in the functional realm a lot of doctors say inflammation is the root cause of all chronic degenerative disease and autoimmune disease and health problems it's it's it, and that is true but it's also false and that it's not inflammation right it's it's when inflammation is unchecked right so it's unfettered or unchecked high levels of inflammation that is what leads to the problem because what is inflammation actually designed to do what does the body need inflammation to do the body uses inflammation to tear down old and damaged tissue so that you have room to rebuild and replace it with new um, new tissue right so for, for example your gut cells every two to seven days have to be replaced well how do we get rid of the old ones we use inflammation we use controlled forest fires in a sense controlled fires to get rid of the old and damaged cells and to replace them with new cells so you need a controlled level of inflammation and this is when I say regulating inflammation this is controlled this is controlled and intentional and on purpose and we need things that can regulate that inflammatory process okay again very very different than um, than, than using the term anti-inflammatory because anti-inflammatory typically means that it blocks the, the chemical process of inflammation and so where, where this term really is largely used anti-inflammatory is in is in pharmaceutical right so pharma produces a lot of there are a lot of different drugs that that actually block the chemical process of creating inflammation and why is it a bad idea it's a great idea in the short term if you've got somebody in such acute pain that they can't you know they can't function and and, 
And, but where it gets, becomes a problem is understand that inflammation is part of the healing cycle. It's part of the healing process. And if you don't go through it and allow it to happen appropriately, you actually impede healing. You don't, just because you feel better doesn't mean you're healing better. And that's an important thing to understand because the chemicals that, that are made, so, so inside of your cell membranes, you have omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 fat. Okay, inside of your cell membrane. So, so going back to what I showed you a minute ago, in this membrane you have these types of fats. You also have an enzyme uh, uh, called COX, cyclooxygenase. If you've ever heard of a COX inhibitor, these are drugs like Vioxx and Celebrex. Vioxx was pulled from the market. Uh, it, it was an anti-inflammatory COX inhibitor that was causing heart attacks. It, and it killed thousands of people before they, they actually find the company, which by the way is Pfizer. They were fined, I think it was $2.8 billion for lying about their research, for hiding the fact that they knew that that, that particular drug was detrimental. It's the same company, by the way, that's making those shots that everybody's running to get. It's the same company um, that paid the largest fine in, in, in American history for, for lying and murdering and damaging. It was a criminal penalty fine. Anyway, aside from all that, you've got Cox enzymes. That, that act on these fats. So, so cyclooxygenase is an enzyme that acts on these fats and produces these very important in-stream chemicals called prostaglandins and leukotrienes. And these chemicals regulate the inflammation and balance the inflammation process in such a way that your body is able to get rid of the old so that it can bring in the new. And so again, when you block that enzyme, and guess what else blocks that enzyme? Ibuprofen blocks that enzyme. Your, your predominantly your non steroidal anti-inflammatories block that enzyme from doing its job and that's why they actually stop pain. They stop pain because you never get to inflammation. But remember, you need inflammation to heal and repair and, to, and, and at the end of the day, if you block it incessantly, which is the case for many people who take you know, over-the-counter non steroidal anti-inflammatories every day to block their pain, then what you're actually ending up doing is you're, you're inhibiting your body's full capacity to heal. It's a bad idea. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.